Hello everybody and welcome. Our subject today is the Compaq Aero 8000. It's a lovely Windows C handheld PC sub notebook, extremely light and capable, but with some severe limitations. Let's get to it. The design for the time was very attractive. For the late 90s, it's an extremely small light unit with a lovely 800 by 600 screen, very sharp and crisp, and weights 1.3 kilo. It is thinner than 1 inch, a height once advertised by Apple as being the holy grail of laptop thinness. The viewing angles are decent, but nothing to write home about. The keyboard is a mushy disgrace, worse than horse poo, but better than some recent laptops in my opinion. I'm not sure if Windows C doesn't support the drop-down menu keyboard shortcut, but if it would, it would have been great to have that instead of two Windows keys. When you are typing, sometimes the space bar does not register. Garbage. I'm very pleased to find large shift, enter and backspace keys, dedicated page up, down, home and end, brightness and contrast controls and speaker and volume keys. By the way, the speaker is mono on the palm rest and sounds awful. Here are some of our most popular titles. Bag of bones. The trackpad is a standard tiny late 90s design, but it is good. It supports click and click and drag, but does not support right clicking. It also keeps the cursor moving after you reach the edge. A nice feature to have when you are moving or selecting across the screen. Both keyboard and trackpad are made of the type of texturized plastic that will look shinier than a modern LCD screen in no time. But it looks great when it's still new, like mine. Compaq included everything you would ever need in the box. The documentation is fantastic, including a full list of every formula supported by Pocket Excel. The charger is very well built and was surely designed before the cost-saving madness took over the world. It even has four rubber feet to keep it stable on the floor. You also get a smart card for authentication and you can set it up from the control panel. This laptop is a legacy connectivity powerhouse. You have two dedicated compact flash slots, one internal and one external. The internal one could be used for applications and the external one for making it easy to add files and documents to the IR8000. At the time, storage was very expensive and you would probably be rocking two cards of 32 megabytes. I have managed to run this with two 16 gigabyte cards and you could probably add a third one to the PC card slot for a total of 48 gigabytes. Given that this is no multimedia power horse, we are talking about millions of WordPad documents. Nice. You also get a serial dock connector that can be used for synchronization or to connect it to a docking station in a VGA and serial ports underneath a crappy rubber cover. This is the kind of rubber that will look awful and gummier than a used condom in a few years. The dock connector is very close to the charger port to a very tight fit. Bad. On the other side, you will find next to the PC card slot an infrared port supporting IRDA 1.1 fast infrared at 4 megabits per second, a smart card slot, a PS2 port and a 56 kbps modem. This was the era of the awful software accelerated Win modems so Compaq was actually very kind to include a real hardware modem. Hashtag approved. If you don't trust your colleagues, your Compaq will accept a Kensington lock here. On the bottom, the mandatory battery ejection latch, a welcome card advertising the list of available accessories and the reset button. Believe it or not, I've had to reboot this machine only once since I got it. The backup batteries are, unlike most Windows C devices, two rechargeable AAA batteries. My machine still has the original ones and they have miraculously not leaked. I will replace them in the near future. On the front, you have 
two three and a half millimeters audio ports and two buttons with lights one for the voice recorder and one to suppress notifications standard windows cfa you can record voice notes without having to open the laptop on the right side power and battery leds the performance is good the system is powered by a passively cooled Hitachi SH4 processor running at 128 MHz. The system may feel sluggish, but this is because back in the day there were no eye candy animations to hide from the user the fact that your request is being processed. Scrolling text is awful, but this is a problem with Windows CE. Version 3 actually runs OK. Software support is poor. Not much was released for the SH4 processor, and it is not completely compatible with the previous SH3. The system comes with 16 MB of PC66 RAM, upgradable to 64 MB. Honestly, if you have all that much memory, you don't even need any extra storage. It's enough to install any applications that you may need, unless you're loading GPS maps, or a lot of music. Although, I don't think I even ever found an MP3 player for this. A built-in flash memory module allows a backup of the internal Windows C databases to be taken without needing a compact flash module for that. Increasing the security of your information and periodically backing everything up on the fly in the background. It works very well. Now in 2021, Apple is bragging that MacBooks wake instantly up from sleep. Well, watch this. If you're not playing games or doing any multimedia work, you will probably find everything you need pre-installed. CoCalc is a great calculator. Audible.com gave you online access to all your audiobooks, and Fax Plus was a great tool for the era, before internet access was a given and Fax was an essential business tool. The Network Explorer allowed users to explore local network shares and it still works if you have a network card installed. For Road Warriors, the Citrix ICA client allowed access to remote desktops. The Compact Asset Manager allows IT managers to keep track of the inventory. Compact also included an excellent dictionary and, of course, Total Commander saves the day. Microsoft helps pass the time solitaire but it definitely doesn't use well the screen real estate and Windows C always defaults to full screen, even if the application is not necessarily ready for it. Unfortunately, being powered by the SH4 CPU doesn't help anyone access a broad software library. I managed to install a few applications, but not all of them fit well the 800 by 600 screen. Pocket C crashes and the HBOMB HTML editor is hard-coded for 640 by 240 so you're stuck with a blank void. If you're seeking to experience the rich library of old Windows CE software, this is not the machine for you. Browsing the internet is a no-go. Freedom definitely has its costs. But if you want a distraction-free environment to work, go for it. Sometimes I connect my Model M keyboards to the PS2 port and a serial mouse and enjoy typing for hours without being distracted by any notifications. Pocket Excel supports all the formulas that I actually need and I just find the low DPI 800 by 600 screen beautiful and liberating its limitations. Pocket Outlook shines, giving you broader view to calendar entries and task lists. If you are one of the legacy users of Access and still keep customized local databases, you will find a great companion in Pocket Access. Unfortunately, the battery life is not like other Windows C devices, but enough for an evening of writing or a short train trip. If you look into the rebuilding the battery, I have bad news for you. I was not really able to find a good guide, but my own battery still works. If you're looking for the full Windows CE experience, the Compaq Aero 8000 is not the machine for you. However, if you're looking for a basic no-frills, only work kind of computing experience, it will impress you with its lightness, portability and elegance.